The VH-92 Patriot is a revolutionary helicopter that has captured the attention of aviators worldwide. Named after the symbol of American courage and freedom, this helicopter is as powerful as the most formidable jet. It is not just a symbol of strength and protection, but also a marvel of modern technology. The VH-92 Patriot is equipped with advanced avionics and communication systems, and its impressive technological advancements make it a true revolution in the field of aviation. What is the technology behind this aircraft? Why is the VH-92 Patriot considered a revolution in aviation? This helicopter was specifically redesigned to transport the U.S. President. Discover what makes this advanced aircraft stand out from its cutting-edge features to its impressive capabilities. Join us as we explore why the VH-92 Patriot is a force to be reckoned with in the skies. When the President of the United States boards any Marine Corps helicopter, it adopts the call sign of Marine One. Packed with features tailored for the President's safety, including ballistic armor, advanced missile warning systems, and anti-missile defenses, the helicopter ensures secure transport for the leader of the United States. Beyond its impressive exterior, Marine One boasts a carefully designed interior, offering a glimpse into the specialized world that serves the unique needs of the U.S. President. Sikorsky is a big name in the aviation industry, and they entered their VH-92 variant of the S-92 into the VXX competition. The VXX, also known as the Presidential Helicopter Replacement Program, is a project aimed at replacing the current Marine One helicopters. These helicopters are used to transport the President of the United States, and the existing ones are becoming outdated. Now, the goal of the VXX program is to ensure the President has access to modern, reliable, and secure transportation. However, Sikorsky didn't win. The project went to the Lockheed Martin VH-71 Kestrel. However, the story doesn't end there. In 2010, the competition was restarted. Why, do you ask? It was because the development costs for the VH-71 Kestrel started to skyrocket. This gave Sikorsky a second chance, and they resubmitted the VH-92 in April 2010, and eventually, all the other aircraft manufacturers had dropped out of the contest, and Sikorsky was the last one standing. In 2014, the VH-92 was declared the winner of the restarted VXX competition, and Sikorsky was awarded a whopping $1.24 billion contract to produce this beast. Just so you know, this isn't your average helicopter. The VH-92 comes with a swanky executive interior and is loaded with military mission support systems. The VH-92A helicopters exhibit impressive versatility, as their interiors can be thoughtfully configured to transport up to 14 passengers. This flexibility in seating arrangements allows for the inclusion of not only the president, but also an essential entourage, including advisors, security personnel, and other dignitaries. In 2017, the United States Navy ordered six of these helicopters, now known as the VH-92A, and plans were put in place to produce an additional 17 aircraft starting in 2020. Now you're probably thinking, what's the cost? Well, the total program cost for the fiscal year 2015 was a cool $4.7 billion for 23 helicopters. That's an average cost of $205 million per aircraft. And in July 2016, the design passed its critical design review, giving it the green light for production. The VH-92A helicopter took to the skies for the very first time on the 28th of July, back in 2017, at the Sikorsky's facility in Stratford, Connecticut. And it got a chance to show off its skills at the White House, performing takeoff and landing tests at the same spots used for Marine One. This beast is operated by a crew of four, including a pilot, co-pilot, communication systems operator, and a crew chief. It can comfortably carry up to 14 passengers. In terms of size, it's pretty impressive. It's 56 feet and two inches long, 17 feet and two inches wide, and stands 15 feet, five inches tall. The cabin itself is spacious too, with a length of 20 feet and a height of six feet, eight inches. 
Now let's talk about weight. When it's empty, it weighs in at 15,500 pounds, but it can handle a gross weight of 26,500 pounds and has a max takeoff weight of 27,700 pounds. Under the hood, it's powered by two General Electric CT78A turboshaft engines, each delivering 2,520 horsepower. The main rotor has a diameter of 56 feet 4 inches and covers an area of 2,492.3 square feet. The blade section at the root is a Sikorsky SC21110 and at the tip it's a Sikorsky SSC A19. The performance of this helicopter is pretty impressive. First off, the maximum speed. This beast can hit a whopping 165 knots. That's 190 miles per hour or 306 kilometers per hour. Next up, the cruise speed. That's the speed this machine typically maintains while in operation. It cruises along at a cool 151 knots, or 174 miles per hour, or 280 kilometers per hour. Now let's talk about range. This machine can travel 539 nautical miles without needing to refuel. In simpler terms, that's 620 miles, or 998 kilometers. To point that into perspective, the President could travel from DC to Northern Florida without needing to refuel. The service ceiling, or the maximum altitude this machine can operate at, is 14,000 feet, or 4,300 meters. That's higher than some mountains. Disc loading is a bit technical, but it's the weight the rotor supports during flight. For this machine, it's 9.8 pounds per square foot, or 48 kilograms per square meter. Finally, the power to mass ratio, which is a measure of performance. For this machine, it's 0.23 shaft horsepower per pound, or 0.38 kilowatts per kilogram. Sikorsky Aircraft, a distinguished subsidiary of Lockheed Martin, uses these cool S numbers for almost all their aircraft. Fun fact, the first 27 of those, S1 through S27, were actually designed by the legendary Igor Sikorsky himself, way back before he left Russia. Now, things get a little bit more complex, especially with all their helicopters. The military tends to slap on a bunch of extra codes depending on what they use the helicopter for. So you might see things like UH, SH, and MH which stand for Utility Helicopter, Scout Helicopter, and Multi-Mission Helicopter, all for what might look like the same basic aircraft. To make things even more complex, sometimes these helicopters get sent back to Sikorsky or another company and get even more tweaks, creating even more variations of the same model number. We have the Sikorsky S-28, designed supposedly in 1918. This aircraft holds a special place in Sikorsky's history. It was his first American design, and it was ambitious. This projected airplane was a four-engine, 32-passenger biplane. Imagine a giant, double-winged plane carrying a whole airplane cabin full of folks back in 1919. Unfortunately, there's no record of this design ever being built, but it shows the vision Sikorsky had for large-scale passenger air travel. The second variant is the Sikorsky S-29A, Developed in 1924, this was the first Sikorsky aircraft built in the United States. Unlike the S-28, this was a more practical design. It was a twin-engine biplane, but instead of passengers, it was designed for cargo hauling. This could have been an important step in the development of air freight, but again, details about its use are scarce. The third variant is the Sikorsky S-30 and it was developed in 1925. This design aimed to combine passenger and cargo capabilities. Planned as a twin-engine biplane, airliner slash mail plane, it seems Sikorsky was trying to refine a design that could handle both people and goods. Sadly, this aircraft never made it past the drawing board. In 1925, the Sikorsky S-31 got smaller. It was a single-engine biplane. And although details about this design are hard to find, it suggests Sikorsky might have been exploring designs for smaller, personal aircraft. The Sikorsky S-32 was designed in 1926, and although it was another single-engine biplane, this time it was designed specifically for two passengers. Sikorsky's S-37 marked the end of an era for Sikorsky. The S-Guardian 
was his last land-based fixed-wing design. It was an eight-seat, two-engine sesquiplane, similar to the S-36, but designed for land use only. However, by this time, Sikorsky's focus was shifting towards flying boats, which would lead to his greatest successes. The S-38 is where things get legendary, folks. This aircraft was a twin-engine sesquiplane flying boat that became Sikorsky's first commercially successful aircraft. It had the capability to carry eight passengers and was used by airlines like Pan Am for passenger transport. The United States Navy even adopted a version, designated the PS. The S-38's success with airlines and the military solidified Sikorsky's reputation as a leading aircraft designer. From 1928 to 1937, Sikorsky developed designs that cemented its place in aviation history. The Sikorsky RS was built on the success of the S-38. The RS was a transport flying boat, specifically designed for the U.S. Navy. It offered increased range and payload capacity for military applications. It was followed shortly by the S-39, which was essentially a five-seat single-engine variant of its bigger brother. This offered a more economical option for smaller-scale passenger transport. In 1931, the next variant, the S-40, marked another leap forward. It had four engines and could carry 28 passengers. It is a hybrid monoplane flying boat. The next design took inspiration from the successful S-38. The S-41 was a twin-engine monoplane flying boat, essentially a scaled-up version of the S-38 with a single wing instead of two. The U.S. Navy adopted it as the RS-1. Shortly after this, another prototype was designed in 1932, the XP-2S. This was a twin-engine patrol flying boat designed for the U.S. Navy. While not going into full production, it showcased Sikorsky's continuing innovation in military aircraft. And this aircraft served a specific purpose by offering valuable scouting capabilities for the Navy. Between 1934 and 1935, the Sikorsky S-42 Clipper took flight. The S-42 Clipper was a magnificent four-engine flying boat that was designed for long-distance passenger travel. Pan Am used these clippers to establish some of the world's first transoceanic passenger routes, offering a glamorous way to travel across vast oceans. By 1936, fixed-wing engine designs came to an end with the Sikorsky XBRL-3 bomber aircraft, but it wasn't widely adopted. Sikorsky's focus shifted towards a new kind of aircraft, the helicopter and the variant of this model was essentially downsized to a twin-engine version of the S-42. It was also amphibious, meaning it could take off and land on both water and land. And even though it was the last of its kind, its versatility made it popular with both the military and civilian operators. Now, back to the Sikorsky VH-92 Patriot, which was developed from the Sikorsky S-92. It is great to see that this helicopter has evolved from a long line of aircraft. The Sikorsky S-90 itself is no joke. It is also a twin-engine medium-lift helicopter that has a fleet of impressive flight control and rotor systems. First things first, power. The S-92 packs a punch with twin GE CT-78A turboshaft engines, basically fancy ways of saying it has two supercharged jet engines spinning like crazy to get these rotors going. Now the body of this beast is built tough. The main frame is made of aluminum, strong and reliable, but to keep things light where it counts, they use some composite components in other areas. The rotors are where things get interesting. The S92 has a four-bladed main rotor, and these blades are no slouches, similar to its successor, the VH92. They're not only made from a special composite material for strength and lightness, but they're also wider and reach out further than the blades on the Sikorsky S-70, an earlier helicopter design. The tip of each blade is specifically shaped to cut down on noise and also generate more lift. Rounding out the rotor system, most of the other parts besides the blades themselves are made from super strong titanium. That's some serious tech right there. Sikorsky put in a fancy system called an active vibration control system. This basically uses sensors and special built-in shakers to smooth out the ride and keep the noise down. 
They say it works so well that the cabin stays quieter than even the strictest rules require. Now, there have been some rumblings, pun intended, about how smooth this helicopter really is. A study done in Norway back in 2008 found that the S-92 vibrated more than a similar helicopter, the Eurocopter EC-225 Super Puma, even though the study did not take into account their latest vibration-busting tech. Things got a little more serious in 2011 when a newspaper report in Norway claimed the noise and vibration levels might even be causing health problems for people flying in the S-92, like ringing in the ears and even heart issues, which would be unpleasant. Now, it's important to note that these are just reports, and there haven't been any widespread confirmations of these health concerns, but it is something to be aware of. It is worth note that Sikorsky followed all of the safety rules set by the Federal Aviation Administration for this type of helicopter, and, in fact, the Federal Aviation Administration was so impressed, they called the S-92 the safest helicopter in the world, which is a big accomplishment. It is no secret why this advanced piece of machinery was designated to transport the President of the United States. The Marine Helicopter Squadron 1, known as HMX-1, is the exclusive Marine Corps unit tasked with the transportation of the President, Vice President, and other high-ranking officials under the U.S. government. Reflecting its crucial role in presidential transport, the White House has a specific area designated for Marine One landings. It is not uncommon to witness a squadron of five or six helicopters, identical in appearance to Marine One, soaring through the skies in a synchronized formation. This strategic display serves as a decoy tactic employed for security purposes during certain situations. The use of multiple helicopters, indistinguishable from the Marine One, enhances the complexity of the President's aerial movements, confounding potential threats and ensuring the safety of the Commander-in-Chief. Even though the S-92 is a safe helicopter with a lot of great safety features, there was room for improvement which led to the development of the VH-92 and the whopping investment of $1.2 billion into making the variant a success. Thanks for watching. What do you think of Sikorsky helicopters? Do you think the Sikorsky VH-92 Patriot is a valuable innovation? Share your thoughts in the comments section. Also, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one.